Welcome back to SGU Uncut. We are in week four of our series, Redirecting Root, and I have a special guest with me today. Allison, you're back. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. I know. But I'm, I'm glad to be back so and helping exciting. you out. Yeah. Yeah. What's been the highlight of your week? So my aunt got married last Saturday, Aww. and I have a photography business on the side. I was able to take the pictures for her. That's awesome. It's such a beautiful thing to be able to capture your memories like that yeah. for a whole family. I know you've captured some for me before. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I love it. She's so good at her job. If you need any photography, hit her up. Oh, thank you. <laughs> like I said, this is week four of our series, Redirecting Roots. So if you missed any of the past weeks talking about unspoken, unrealistic, or wrong expectations, you can go back and watch them because they're going to set you up for what we're going to talk about today, which is waiting on God and expectations and having patience. And I know for me, I have a lot of impatience, you know, <laughs> for example, Brian Crook on our staff gave this example one time about impatience and how we're watching YouTube and we can't wait to hit that skip button, yes. you know, to get to the mm -hmm. video. I hate that I think we all so do that, much. Though. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a good example for our lives where we can be impatient with a lot of things. So mm -hmm. when's the time you had to practice patience for? So I was recently in the police academy um, before mm -hmm. I graduated and became an officer, and we all wanted to just get to the end. Mm -hmm. um, it was six months worth of training, and we were all like, what are we officers? Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> but we had to realize that we every day we had something to learn for a purpose, yeah. and we couldn't mm -hmm. just rush through it. We had to do certain things mm -hmm. to be able to learn certain laws or certain rules or practices. We had to be able to perform in our daily duties. So. Yeah. We were impatient, but at the end, we were like, oh, so much more. <laughs> <laughs> you can kind of get restless in that waiting, mm -hmm. though. You have to know what's going to happen. You got to know the time. I mean, you had your timeline, but, like, right. sometimes that even makes it worse. You're end. like, let's yeah. get there. We know it's going to be, so let's just get there. Right. <laughs> but when we practice patience, we can become less irritated with our lives. We have more positivity. There's no rushing around from one thing to the next. And so instead, it brings this sense of peace into our minds and hearts and Sometimes we have to be patient with God because he works in silence. He mm -hmm. works in the our waiting, our patience. We have to give him that time to, like, do his thing, you know, do his yeah. work. And the story of Habakkuk, he actually is a good example of this. He is a very impatient person at first. You know, he's asking God. He's being persistent. Why are you doing this to me? When is it my turn? Why are you not listening? Help me out, man, you know. Right. And God responds to him that the vision has an appointed time. So God has his plan set in motion. He's got it all figured out. So when is a time, or maybe with the academy, did you have rest in knowing that God's vision had an appointed time? So I knew that everything we were going through was for a specific reason, something mm -hmm. we had to know to be able to perform our job in a really well and productive way mm -hmm. and like on a daily basis we deal with individuals at their worst times and knowing that I had that patience with those individuals to be able to work through those problems with them mm -hmm. we have a greater outcome at the end of the day when we like, we go to calls for service or we deal with individuals or we help somebody out mm -hmm. um, and just knowing that everything I learned even though it was something that was boring at times or we wish it was going quicker it benefited us because I every single thing I learned in the academy I, I've used at work yeah and just being able to practice that patience with other people was really really mm -hmm. important so knowing your purpose kind of mm -hmm. is what sets up your patience oh absolutely is there anything you specifically did to practice patience yes yeah, so I had last year I worked um when I was a cadet before I went to the academy I was at the precinct and I had an individual call in anonymous one night and she was screaming and yelling and I was trying to figure out what was going on and mm -hmm. I couldn't track the phone number to figure out who it was specifically. She wouldn't mm -hmm. tell me her name. She wouldn't tell me where she was and she was threatening to take her life and she, she said she was just done. She wanted to, to, to kill herself and I couldn't just not try and help. Mm -hmm. um, and I tried talking to her and reasoning with her and got to the point where I, need, I realized that she just needed to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. The more I said something, the more she more riled up she would get because she didn't think I was listening to her. Mm -hmm. So I took a took a, um, a seat in the back on the back burner and yeah. was like just letting her talk and she was yelling and she was screaming and then she would be calm mm -hmm. and she just needed someone to talk to. By mm -hmm. the end of the night, three hours later, she was finally yes. calm. She was ca calm and collective and she thanked me for talking with her. Mm -hmm. And a couple months went by and I got a, I was working the desk again. I got a phone call and I answered it usually. Can I call a Baltimore County Police? Can I help you? <laughs> so like the, the way I answered the phone. <laughs> and she was like, I remember you. And as soon as I heard her voice, I was like, that's the woman I helped that night. Mm -hmm. And I didn't think I'd heard from her ever again. Honestly, I, mm -hmm. I didn't know what was going to happen. And she was like, you saved my life that night. And I was like, I didn't know what to say. I, I was at a loss of words. And yeah. she was like, you listen to me. Like, no one ever listens. Usually people just, they tell me, oh, you'll be fine. And then they mm -hmm. hang up or, like, no one wants to actually listen to her. They'll walk away from her. But mm -hmm. I was the one who had that patience with her and just realizing she needed to talk. Mm -hmm. She needed someone to talk to. And I let her let her do her thing and it helped her in the end and mm -hmm. she actually walked into the precinct and I met her a couple like a week or two after That's that. That's amazing. So it was just like 
a huge circle of events that oh. started with patience. Yeah. And like I, one friend told me one time, the patience is power. If you can have that in life, you can get through so many things mm-hmm. like that is thrown at you. Mm-hmm. And that's God working through that patience. Mm-hmm. Like we just said, working through the silence. You had your silence in the conversation with that woman. Right. You know, Absolutely. he was working through that. And the more we can practice patience, the more we go through situations where we focus on patience being our priority, the more it's going to come naturally to us. And mm-hmm. Habakkuk was a good example of that that he came to understand that the vision has an appointed time. Our faith causes us to live in expectation of God and his goodness, but it comes in his appointed time. Our job is to wait for it and look out for God's goodness. What was the good that came out of your waiting? I mean, you saved that woman's life. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, what's that like? What is? It's just like knowing that either, like I can I can use my, my power of my voice to, mm-hmm. to help somebody or I can use my power of patience and just understanding to help people as well and knowing that, like, now I know how to handle certain situations. I know there's more than one way to handle a situation like that. And I can use it if that situation ever were to come up again on my job. Because, unfortunately, mm-hmm. we deal with people on their worst days, like I said before. So you never know what you're walking into when we get a call for service. Mm-hmm. And just knowing that I have different outlets to be able to use to help other individuals, whether that's practicing patience, whether that's talking through it with them. Um, and just knowing that I have God on my side to help other, other people through it as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and just knowing that, like, He's on my side as well for all my coworkers. Every day before I drive into work, I always say a prayer. And I've been doing that yeah. for three years now mm-hmm. just because you never know what could happen. And that's just something that I like to do for everybody that I work mm-hmm. with. And you're constantly learning from that patience. Like you mm-hmm. just said, you know, the more situations you go through, the more you can take that patience into the next situation. Absolutely. It becomes more natural. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so discover your patience. See where you need to be patient in your life. Maybe you're waiting on something from God. Find out what that is and practice patience. Pray for patience. It's a virtue, right? So Absolutely. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having love me. love talking about patience with you. You're a <laughs> great example of it. <laughs> Thank you. <Aww. laughs> we hope that our conversation here fuels your conversation in small group. Practice that patience, and we'll see you next week for the final week of Redirecting Ruth.